All right, section six, formalizing relations and functions. Uh, you're going to be able to determine whether a relationship is a function through this section. Um, we've been building with the concept of functions little by little. Now we're going to talk specifically about what it is to be a function. Uh, first, a relation is a pairing of numbers in a set. Okay, so everything that can be written as set of ordered pairs is called a relation. A relation is like saying, hey, look, it's a dog. Okay, uh, the domain are the x values. So all of the x values make up the domain. The range is the y values. Okay, so think about it in terms of you know how we have in an ordered pair we have x comma y. Well, that's d comma r. Okay, the value in the beginning is the domain. The value at the end is the range. Okay. Okay. Now, the definition of the word function, each value in the domain is paired with one value in the range. Okay? So it basically means that when we look at the domain and we look at the range, the domain should not go to two different values in the range. Okay? We're going to see that in just a minute. If I have the number 4, let's say I'm looking at it as a chart like this x and y. If I have the number 4 and it goes to the number 2, I cannot have the number 4 then go to the number 5. Okay. That means, look at what it says, each value in the domain is paired with one value in the range. Well, the problem is, is that this is paired with two values in the range. Okay. Let's look at a picture of that. Identify the domain and range of each relation represent the relation with a mapping. Okay, so a mapping is going to be a specific way of looking at things. So there is each one of them. That was weird. Okay, shoot. Okay, so uh, the domain here, remember domain is the x, so we're going to have negative 2, 0, 4, and 5. So that's the domain. Okay, sorry about that. So the domain is the x values, negative 2, 0, 4, and 5. The range are going to be the y values, 0 0.5, 2.5, 6.5, and 2.5. You only notice, you notice that you write it once. And you know, it's helpful to put it in order, but it doesn't have to be in order. Okay. Uh, let's do this one. The domain is 6, 4, and 5. 6, 4, 5, and 6. There's a 4, there's a 5, and there's a 6, and the 6 is repeated. The range is 3, 4, 5, and 8. 3, 4, 5, and 8. Okay? Now, here's what a mapping looks like. A mapping is where we take the values in the domain, and we draw them in a circle. And then we take the values in the range, and we draw them in a circle. And we draw an arrow from one value to what it is paired with. So the number negative 2 is paired with 0 0.5. So we put an arrow there. The number 0 is paired with 2.5. 4 is paired with 6.5. And 5 is paired with 2.5. Okay. Now, is the relation a function? Each value of x goes to one value of y. Well, yes it is. Even though we have the number 0 going to 2.5 and we have the number 5 going to 2.5, each value of x has one value of y. Now look at the difference. Here is the domain, 4, 5, and 6. Here is the range. You see here, look at this one right here. This is the important number. Look how there are two arrows going away from the number 6 to two different values of y. That is not a function. Okay. Not. Or not a function. When we have a value in the domain that splits to two different values in the range, then we're not talking about a function. But if it's the other way around, two values in the domain go to the same value in range, that's okay. okay. So each value of x has to have one value of y. Well, this value of x has two values of y. Okay, vertical line test. If we have a graph, 
We can tell whether it's a function by doing what's called the vertical line test. Okay. So we're going to look at this. These are all the points. This is what they look like. We've got a dot, 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 dot. Oh, vertical line right here touches two points. It touches right here. It touches right here. Not a function. Remember, vertical line is straight up and down. We run it along the graph. If it touches two points at the same time, it's not a function. Okay, then we have the graph of this one. We look what it looks like. It's an upside down, it's called a parabola. We're gonna talk about them later. Uh, one vertical line, it goes like this. We move it all along here. It is a function. Okay. okay. Now, something called function notation. Uh, basically what we have is y is equal to negative 3x plus 1 and all we do is we replace y with that. It's a, just a different way of writing. It's kind of like set builder. It's more formal. Okay. So then we get difficult questions like this. The function w of x, that's how we read this, we read this as saying f of x. So this is w of x is equal to 250 times x. It represents the number of words w of x you can read in x minutes. How many words can you read in 8 minutes? Okay, so we have our equation, w of x. This represents x, so we're going to plug it in. Okay, we solve it. So we can read 2,000 words in 8 minutes. Okay, 2,000 words in 8 minutes. Okay. All right, now, in some questions, they're going to give us the domain. In this case, they tell us the domain is 1, 2, 3, and 4, and our job is to figure out the range. This is just plug and chug. Take the number 1, plug it in for x, solve it. That's the value of the range. So if we do 1, we get negative 1.5 plus 4, so we get negative 2.5. Okay, negative 2.5 is the first value. And what we can do here is we can make a table. Okay, we plug in one, we get, oops, sorry, it is 2.5. Okay, if we plug in two, we get one. If we plug in three, we get this. If we plug in this, so we've got 2.5, one, negative 0 0.5, and two, uh, sorry, a negative two, so that means letter A is the answer for this question. Okay, so the correct answer is A. They tell us the domain, we plug them in, we find the range. Okay, uh, last question. Uh, you have three quarts of paint to, to paint the trim in your house. The trim is that stuff on the bottom of the floor uh, that you see in the room that's ugly brown. Okay, A quart of paint, each quart of paint covers 100 feet squared. So therefore the function A of Q, Q being the quarts of paint, is equal to 100 times the number of quarts of paint. Represents the area A, Q, A of Q, in square feet that Q quarts of paint cover. Okay. What domain and range are reasonable for the function? Okay. So this is asking what could X be? What could Q be? And because of that, what then could A of Q be? Okay. So, and then what is the graph of the function? Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to know to need to plan what we need to do and what we have to plan. Okay, one quart of paint covers 100 feet squared. You have three quarts of paint. Uh, we need the reasonable domain and range values in order to graph the function. Find the least and greatest amounts of paint you can use and areas of trim you can cover, and then you make the graph. Okay. So we're working through this little by little. So the question is, is what is the highest value in the domain and the lowest value in the domain? Well, what does the domain represent? It represents the number of quarts of paint. Well, let's say I didn't paint, therefore I could use zero. Okay. The least amount of paint you can use is none. So I think about the lowest value in my domain is zero. I have three quarts, so therefore my highest value in the domain is three. So my domain is somewhere between zero and three inclusive. 
the range is represented by how much I could actually paint. Each court covers 100 feet squared. So in order to find my range, I would have to plug in these numbers for, for Q. So that's what I do. I plug in the lowest and the highest possible total. The lowest becomes I can paint nothing or I can paint 300 square feet. So that's what it looks like. If I plug in, if I use no chords, I cover nothing. If I use one chord, I cover 100, two chords, 200, three chords, 300. There's the graph. Okay. So just to summarize, the domain represents how much paint I have. I have three chords, so that's the maximum. Or I could decide I'm not going to paint at all, so I could use zero. If I use zero, I can paint zero. If I use three quarts, I can paint 300 square feet. So then I plug those numbers in and I saw, okay? Last thing, look at that, pause if you want, and I'm out, see ya.